Welcome back to Cancer Buzz TV. I'm your host, Summer Johnson. On this show, we aim to bring you the news and the latest issues in cancer care you need to know. Today, in our Returning to Practice series, a focus on treating patients with acute myeloid leukemia, or AML, as the COVID-19 landscape continues to evolve. Shared decision-making is especially important in the treatment of diseases with complex treatment regimens and side effects. And in the uncertain COVID-19 environment, patient-provider communication, patient education, and follow-up are crucial to care. Here today to get into this is Dr. Katherine Lai. She's the Director of Leukemia and Assistant Professor at the Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center at Georgetown University Medical Center. Dr. Ehab Atala, Professor of Medicine and Section Head of Hematologic Malignancies in the Division of Hematology and Oncology at the Medical College of Wisconsin. And Dr. Jonathan Abbas from Tennessee Oncology and Director of the Acute Leukemia Program at Ascension St. Thomas Midtown Hospital in Nashville. Dr. Lai, let's start with you. Have you seen patients who've experienced delays in diagnoses or treatment as a result of the pandemic? So I would say early on in the pandemic, we were seeing fewer patients coming to clinic and coming to the hospital uh, because they were concerned about, about getting a COVID infection. However, I'd say now that the pandemic has been going on for, for quite some time, um, patients are trying to resume activity as much as they normally can. So I would say the delays are less now than they were in the beginning. What about you, Dr. Atala? How do you discuss COVID-19 vaccination with patients and who on the team does this? Uh, I usually discuss the COVID vaccination. And um, as we all know, it's just a, it's difficult to decide when to do it. Um, for example, patients with acute leukemia that have a time-limited therapy, whether it's like induction and consolidation, I usually try to wait until they're done with their induction and consolidation before uh, giving them the vaccine. However, we do have some patients who are on uh, continuous therapy with um, HMA and venetoclax, for example. Um, and in those patients, uh, there's really no definitive time of when it would be a good time. What I try to do is uh, give them the vaccine um, when they're three to four weeks out from their last treatment. Hopefully their immunity is better at that point and hopefully they would uh, develop um, some antibodies. Dr. Abbas, can you explain why it's critical to have shared decision-making conversations with these patients and why these discussions are even more critical now? Absolutely. Thanks, Summer. <clears throat> so treatment for AML for acute myeloid leukemia is extremely personal. Depending on the age of the patient, their comorbidities and their geography and their family support and their wishes, there are all levels of intensity of treatment. Some considered low intensity treatments that can be done predominantly in outpatient settings and some which might be more intense therapies that require actually a full month of or more of hospitalization. So when you meet a new patient with AML, the first thing you have to do is decide what is the goal for the patient and the goal for the family. And of course, this in the times of COVID becomes even more challenging because with strict with such strict limitations on hospital visitation, it's very hard for a patient to be in the hospital for a month knowing their family has very limited visitations, children have virtually no visitation options. And so that really does factor greatly into the decision making as to what's best for the patient. Dr. Lai, how are you engaging these patients in shared decision making on the question of whether or not to get the booster when it becomes available? That's a really good question. Uh, so I would say for all my patients, which are, you know, they're, I, I treat primarily blood cancers and specifically leukemias, that these patients are immunocompromised, especially the ones that are getting treatment. So I guess what I would say is I would put patients into kind of one of three baskets in terms of either their active treatment or they're um, in remission but in surveillance or they're in some sort of maintenance treatment. So absolutely the ones who are in, in active treatment, I would say that those patients need to be vaccinated. Um, initially we were saying maybe we would try to time it when their immune system's a little bit stronger, 
but it's just hard to do. And because things are changing so much with COVID, I, we just, for right now, I just say patients should get vaccinated or should get vaccinated as soon as they can. Um, in the patients, and then same with the, for the patients who are in either the maintenance or active surveillance, it's that, you know, they're not as immunocompromised, but those patients should also get vaccinated. In terms of the boosters, um, we have guidelines in terms of, or our hospital has guidelines in terms of, which is based on what the CDC has put out in terms of what is considered immunocompromised. And so really it's anybody who's on active treatment should be getting a booster. And then in other patients, um, I'm telling them if they're not immunocompromised or not on active treatment, it's just to wait the standard eight months or other guidelines based on what comes out. How are you discussing the booster with patients, Dr. Atala? Uh, I think most of my patients, I'd say 90% uh, upwards of patients who have leukemia and autoimmunocompromised um, actually are looking for the booster and want to get the booster. Um, and we do the same uh, same decision making if it's time limited we just wait until they're done uh, with their treatment and then give them the vaccine um, but if they're on continuous therapy just the same uh, rule I can tell you that most immunocompromised patients uh, at least in my practice have been very eager to get the vaccine and get the booster shots too Dr. Abbas, how are you counseling patients? Do precautions vary depending on the subtype? Uh, so they do. Um, different types of acute myeloid leukemia and the, and the um, treatments that we choose are going to cause more profound immunodeficiencies. And uh, this is going to really dictate what the patient's restrictions are. What are they allowed to do? Can they be going having visitors? Can they be going out to dinner? Can they be going out to grocery stores? So really, the more intense the therapy a patient signs up, for, which might have a greater efficacy and a greater chance of achieving a remission, that with it comes more and more restrictions. And it's those kind of conversations that are imperative to have with every new patient at the time of diagnosis. Dr. Lai, what about patient distress? Are you seeing an increase in this because of the pandemic? And are you working more closely with the mental health professionals in your hospital? Yeah, I mean, I think in general, the treatment for for um, leukemias is a multidisciplinary approach in general. I mean, I have a team with a nurse and a physician's assistant. Uh, we have a social worker and a nutritionist. So I would say um, that those those resources are all in place. I would say that the nutritional support and the social work support has probably become more important uh, during COVID. And so to make sure that they have those resources and have access to those, just in terms of if anything comes up. Um, in terms of what typically comes up, it's usually you know more logistical and how can I visit family and how can I do it safely? And so talking through that um, is usually what's helpful. And so we have to really get specifics in terms of the scenario. And there's no consensus. It's just kind of, I mean, we, we have to tailor each individual situation to the patient and do what we feel is best for that patient. Dr. Abbas, has COVID-19 changed the patient follow-up process? Uh, so that's a great question. So unfortunately, many of the patients with acute myeloid leukemia, as a nature of their treatment, do have very significant uh, things like cytopenias that require transfusional support. So while, while a lot of healthcare has switched to more remote and televisits, in our case, we unfortunately, once a patient starts AML treatment, do need to be fairly hands-on with them. Now, what I have been doing is a lot more second opinion consults and a lot of more remote consults consults, uh, keeping people out of the office and trying to keep them more distance. But once a patient starts therapy for AML, it's very, very challenging to treat them uh, and support them appropriately without actually having them in the office. Last question, Dr. Lai, what do we need to keep in mind about treating these patients right now? So I would say that um, the, the most important thing is communication, is Patients feel empowered when they can make informed decisions. And so when they are given the tools that they need to make, um, to make educated decisions, then patients feel more comfortable being treated. So that, I mean, specifically being, you know, understanding the context of their immediate treatment, but also knowing what the long-term plan is so that they can also account for what's going to happen in the foreseeable future uh, so that they can plan for themselves, but also for their family in the context of who can, who can they interact with and who can they take care of and who may or may not need to travel to, to visit them if they, you know, if somebody's going through a transplant and needs a care, a long-term caregiver. So I really think communication is, is important. 
Dr. Atala, any closing thoughts we need to keep in mind? I think uh, overall we have to be uh, mindful of what's uh, going on uh, around us with COVID. We need to emphasize to patients that with or without COVID, they needed to be careful anyway. Uh, we have to uh, understand and um, in, a, in a respectful manner, uh, respect our patients' uh, concerns for the vaccines or not. And it's our job as physicians to um, uh, educate respectfully um, and just support them through, through this hard time. Thank you, Drs. Lai, Atala, and Abbas. For more resources on treating patients with AML and more of the Returning to Practice series, you can head over to the ACCC website at accc-cancer.org. On behalf of all of us here at Cancer Buzz TV, thank you for watching. I'm Summer Johnson.